Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa tabina lahum bi ihsan ila yawmiddin wa alayna ma'ahum wa fihim bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimeen. We intend to learn and teach the way na at ta'alama wa ta'aleem what one nafa wa lantifa and to give and receive benefit what tadkir wa mudakira and to remind and be reminded or take mutual admonition with ifada wa istifada and to profit mutually with hatha ala tamasuki bi kitabillah wa bi sunnati rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and to encourage holding fast to Allah's book and the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa dua ila al-huda wa dilala ta ala al-khair and summoning or inviting to guidance and leading to all good all of that ibtigha'a wa chila seeking solely Allah's countenance and we ask Allah to grant us to be sincere in that seeking Allah's countenance Allah's good pleasure nearness to Allah and his reward wa maradatihi wa qurbi wa thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala we intend what our author al-imam hujjatul islam al-ghazali intended in this beginning of guidance as well as our shaykhs and the pious and what Allah knows of good intentions and we ask Allah to aid us in this Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatika to proceed we're continuing this final section of the beginning of guidance which discusses keeping company etiquettes of suhbah etiquettes of companionship and he mentioned that they, there are two responsibilities with those who are we are going with those with whom we are going to keep company. The first is that we look in them for the conditions of a companion. That we look at them and, and measure them against these conditions of a companion. So the first of those that he mentioned was al aqal right? That they be people of reason or intellect, or you might say wisdom. The second, that they have good character, husnul khuluq, right? That they have good character. The third, as salah, that they be, um, he translates that as uprightness, and we discussed that, that salah is, uh, a salah is someone who's fulfilling the rights of Allah and the rights of his servants. And then lastly, and that's the point, or fourthly, excuse me, al-hirs, that we not keep the company of someone who is uh, greedy or covetous, I would translate it as, but covetous for the world, right? We don't keep the company of those who covet the world. And then lastly, a sidq, that we look for honesty in our companions. So we've come to this tr this condition. al khamis the author says, rahimahullah, al khamis was sidq. So the author says, فَلَا تَصْحَبْ كَذَّابًا فَإِنَّكَ مِنْهُ عَلَىٰ غُرُورٍ You will always be deceived by him. وَهُوَ مِثْلَ السَّرَابِ يُقَرِّبْ مِنْكَ الْبَعِيدِ وَيُبَعِدْ مِنْكَ الْقَرِيبِ And he is like a mirage. Right? He is like a mirage and he'll make something that is near seem far or something that is distant seem near. Meaning that you can't trust his reports. And Allah protect us from that. So this fifth condition, a sidq, this is a condition that Allah ordered us to seek in our company. Allah says, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu taqullaha wa kunu ma'asadiqeen. O you who believe, be mindful of Allah and be with as sadiqeen. And this verse has a subtlety, and that is that as sadiqeen, the people of truth, those who are true, that is a very lofty station. And Allah didn't order us to be among the people of that lofty station. Allah ordered us to be with the people of that lofty station. However, by keeping the company of a people, one takes on their attributes, as has been previously stated. So keeping the company of those who are sadiq, can you pass that small little square box too? Keeping the company of those who are sadiq is a means of attaining this immense virtue, as sidq. And as sidq, 
That is how um, the, the, the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were. Those who he praised, for example, who were martyred on the day of Uhud. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentioned them. He said, Min al-mu'minina rijalan, rijalun, excuse me. Min al-mu'minina rijalun, sadaqu ma'ahadullaha alayhi. From the believers, there are, there are men who have been true to the covenant that they have made with Allah. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَضَى نَحْبَهُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْتَضِرْ وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبْدِيلًا Some of them have fulfilled their oath, and some of them are still waiting, and they've not changed whatsoever. So that occurs, uh, that is um, revealed concerning the martyrs of Uhud, like Hamza and like Musa bin Umair and others, those who are true to the covenant that they had made with Allah. And Allah ordered us to be with people like that. And in each age, there will be people that are like that. Those who have been true to the covenant that they have made with Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among, among them. And we ask him that in his mercy. And he is the most merciful of the merciful. So Sidq is a very lofty station. And in a sense, this whole affair could be described as being true to our covenant with Allah. Being true to our covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we were going to say there was a specific virtue in those who are dedicated and travelers on the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I were going to mention one virtue that one saw in them or that they should, the aspirant should have, I would say that it's this, a sid. Because that's what I've seen my shuyukh constantly emphasize, and even some of them define this discipline as that. Tasawwuf ibn Ajiba and perhaps others, it might be a quote of earlier uh, scholars such as the Zaruq, but I memorize it specifically from Ibn Ajiba. They define tasawwuf as sidqut tawajjuh illallah. <coughs> Truly directing oneself to Allah. Or genuinely directing oneself. Genuinely turning to Allah. So sidq is, 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 is uh, a major virtue. Imam Haddad said if we're honest, and he said this in the context of those who say they lack awliya in order to guide them as shuyukh. He said if we're honest, What's lacking is Sidq. If we're honest, what's lacking is the genuineness on the part of the seekers. And then he continued with a well-known saying in the people of this uh, regard or of this affair, were the seekers to be true, they would find shuyukh on their doorsteps. So Sidq is, is what's necessary. He also says, Rahimullah, Sidq, being true, is a sword that isn't placed on anything except that it cuts it. La ilaha illallah. Sidq can be defined, and it's obviously the apparent manifestation, and that's how it's translated, is honesty. Being honest or true in speech. Honest or truthful in speech. But Sidq is beyond that. They define, and this is in, in Qushayri's Risala. The, the, the lowest degree of Sidq is Istiwa as Sirri wal Alan or Alania, right? That which is private and public being equal is the lowest degree of Sidq. So if we understand that, we understand how lofty of a station that is because all of us are working on that. All of us are working on our secret and our public being equal. And, uh, and may Allah grant us that. And you have the dua that you all know from Imam Haddad, or many of you know from the Book of Assistance, which we've covered that recently. Allahumma jal sarirati khayran min alaniyati wa jal alaniyati saliha. O oh Allah, make my inward better than my outward, and make my outward pious, or make my inward better than my public life, and make my public life pious. And we ask Allah that in khayran lutf and afiyah. So Sidq is, is elevated. Sidq is a way to high degrees of sainthood, of, of wilaya. The Prophet Wasallam says, it's a well-known hadith, it's in the Sahih. Alaykum bis Sidq. Adhere to honesty or being true. So inna Sidqa yahdi ilal bir. Wa inna al birra yahdi ilal jannah. For surely, honesty leads to bir, which is like, Great good, immense piety, 
and piety leads to paradise. And the hadith continues, وَلَا يَزَالُ الرَّجُلُ يَسْدُقُ وَيَتَحَرَّ الصِّدْقَ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ سِدِّيقَ And a man will continue, and this applies to a woman as well, a man or a woman will, con- will be, con- to be honest and continue to strive for truth until they are written with Allah as a Siddiq. What is a Siddiq? A Siddiq is like Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu or Sayyidina Maryam bint Imran, right? Um, uh, and, and, and the likes of them, right? Uh, the, the mother of Isa bin Maryam, the, those are Siddiqun and, and they mention Wilaya its highest degree is Siddiqiyah, is the station of the Siddiqun or the Siddiqin in that construct. So they're from the highest of the awliya. Some of them say there's no station above them other than Nubuwa, prophecy. But obviously that's not something that someone attains by acquisition. That's something they give him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Siddiqun are the highest of the awliya. And people attain the station of Siddiqiyah by what? لا يزال الرجل يصدق ويتحرى الصدق حتى يكتب عند الله صديقا. A person will continue to be true and strive for the truth until they're written with Allah as someone who is true. لا إله إلا الله. And that's an elevated station. That's an elevated station. So صدق. Allah. There's a lot to be said for صدق. There's a lot to be said for صدق. Another definition you can give for Sidq is Ijtima'u quwwat al zahir wal batin ala al wajha. And that's how our Shaykh defines it. One's inward and outward strength being focused on one's aspiration. So, inwardly and outwardly giving one's all, that's Sidq. And then we mentioned in the beginning of this ta'aliq of, of, of us making some commentary. Inshallah, Allah grant us that that be transmitted entirely from shuyukh that Allah ordered us to be with people like this. Ya ayyuhaladina amanu taqwa laha wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. O you who believe, have taqwa of Allah and be with those who are true. So that's like a stepladder. Because sidq is folk here. Who claims that they're inward and outward and they're private and public are all equal. And that's the least of a sadiq. But Allah ordered us to be with them. So we should seek the likes of those people out and keep their company. And some of their sidq will rub, rub off on us. The same way Ali Imam Ghazali warned us of keeping the company of someone who's covetous of the world because their covetousness will wear off, off on us. If we love and keep the company of those who are true, their truth will wear off on us. And a person will be with those whom they love. So uh, one can t- attain immense benefit in their company. And for those who are able, they should travel even if necessary to seek the likes of that company. They should read the works of people like that. Like Ali Imam Ghazali, rahimahullah. Like uh, Ali Imam Haddad, rahimahullah. And others. And, and, and all of uh, the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam and the work of his companions. All of them are in that category. And, and may, Allah, may Allah be well pleased with them and grant us to be with them in khair and lufanafi and Allah unite us with them fi kulli maqam kareem in every noble station. So he said, keep the company of those who are true and beware of those who are liars. And the Prophet wasallam, as part of that hadith in some of its riwayat, the opposite is mentioned. Wa iyakum wal kathib, beware of dishonesty. فَإِنَّ الْكَذِبَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ وَإِنَّ الْفُجُورَ يَهْدِي إِلَى النَّارِ He said, beware of lying. Lying leads to corruption and corruption leads to hell or to the fire, more specifically. وَلَا يَزَالُ الرَّجُلُ يَكْذِبْ وَيَتَحَرَّ الْكَذِبَ حَتَّى يُكْتَبْ عِنْدُ اللَّهِ كَذَّابَ And a person will continue to lie and strive or seek dishonesty, falsehood until they're written with the law as a liar. 
And kadhab is an intensive form. And those those who speak Arabic who are present, they know how foul of an insult to say someone is kadhab is. Right? It's just an ugly word. It's one of the worst things you can call someone. And 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 honestly, in English, the same thing. Call someone a liar is one of the worst things you can call someone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. So he said, don't keep the company of liars. And uh, to lie is when your statements contradict reality. And to be honest is when your statements conform with reality. And then honesty, there's honesty in speech. And that's that, that your statement conform to reality. And there is honesty in action and that is that you endeavor to be sincere and to perform it with excellence and and exert one's utmost and there's honesty and intention and aim and that's that your intention and your outward action are in entire conformity and that's what's articulated by saying focusing all of one's inward and outward strengths strength on one's on one's aspiration so that's what really in a sense sidq is what we're working on sidq is what the awliya look for in those whom they they guide and initiate into greater openings and may allah give us to be sadiqeen in afia and lutuf and with the sadiqeen so then all of us keep each other's company and all of us should aspire to embody these conditions. So from the first and foremost of the conditions that we should maintain in our interaction is that we're honest with one another. We're honest with one another. So that when we say something, we say what's true. And may Allah grant us that in Lutf and Afia. So these are five conditions. Akal. Reason or intelligence, um, good character, husnul khuluq, akal, husnul khuluq. What was the third? Salah, uprightness, obeying Allah and and treating His slaves properly. And fourth is really uh, zuhud, but he said uh, not having hirs, not being covetous for the world. And fifth is a sidq. So if we're trying to embody teachings and trying to be people whose company is worth something, then all of us should aspire to embody these five virtues so that we're good company for one another. And we should teach it to the members of our household and our children and try to rise to the standard in our gatherings and in our endeavors. And if we do that, that's a great, great thing. That's the benefit of Murabata. Imam al Ghazali, Rahimahullah, I believe it's him. I believe it's him in Minhaj al Abidin. When he talks about Uzla, he talks about seclusion, he talks about the benefit of keeping the company of people in a Rabat, which were places where people dedicated themselves to worship, and in some traditions where they ded- dedicated themselves to learning. And where we studied, they studied in Rabats. Right, and some of them are called uh, Dar. So Dar Rahma is a Rabat named Dar Rahma. So may Allah give us to live in that, and one can find good company in some of these places, and we can aspire to keep company and learn and teach and and, and implement and try to implement some of the Sadiqin of the past. And our Shayukh mentioned you might be in a Rabat and with certain types of company. And it's like you're living with people from a different century, meaning a previous century, and the pious of those times. And Allah's Allah's generosity is vast. So we should aspire to this. And then also, uh, in a way, he's saying these conditions and avoid their opposites. So he says avoid liars. And as we've mentioned with every previous condition, if we were to apply this condition to much of the media, that we are exposed to, and I won't say we'll, we consume, because hopefully we're not consuming that, but much of the media that we're exposed to, it would fail these conditions. Much of it's dishonest. 
and we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kafa bil mar'i kathiban an yuhadditha bi kulli ma sama. It's and it's sahih from him. It's sufficient of dishonesty from a man that he speak about everything he has heard. So that's sufficient, and the internet does that all the time. Every time you turn around, you know, they're giving some sort of report that in many cases later it may manifest that that was fake news or was improperly uh, improperly researched or what have you. Or if it's social media, you know, who, who bothers to substantiate that which they forward? Even people of, of, of merit and repute, sometimes they might have shared a story and then have to retract it and say, that that is, uh, it was you know I got I got bit this time and that was was not correct news. It's not a, it's not an honest upright witness. And for it, for many things you need two upright witnesses to make a case in the Sharia and many many things you need shahida adal two upright witnesses. And Facebook and Twitter have dem demonstrated they're not two upright witnesses, right? They're not two upright witnesses. So let's not take their reports and accept them and everything. And let's not make them our companions. Let's keep the company of people who are honest and, and be people who are honest and be with the true. And may Allah grant us that in khair and lutf and afia. So that's the fifth condition. And may Allah grant us to, first of all, embody this virtue of sidq and be with the, the sadiqeen. May Allah grant us to be with the sadiqeen in khair and lutf and afia. So then the, the author continues, Rahimahullah. And he says, لَعَلَّكَ تَعَدُ مُجْتِمَاءَ هَذِهِ الْخِصَالِ فِي سُكَانَ الْمَدَارَسِ وَالْمَجَالِسِ وَالْمَسَاجِدِ فَعَلَيْكَ بِأَمْرَيْنِ He said, maybe you will not find all of these qualities combined in the inhabitants, or you could say the, uh, the uh, yeah, we'll say the, the residents of the Islamic um, institutes, gatherings and mosques, right? He said, so then you must do one of two things. So if you can't find someone who has all of these virtues, what? Aqam, <coughs> reason, good intellect. They're not foolhardy. And Allah forgive us for our past foolhardiness and protect others from the harm of that. Good character, uprightness, which is salah, not being covetous for the world, not having hirs, being zahid, being indifferent to the world, and sidq, you can't find those, then you must do one of two things. إِمَّا الْعُزْلَى وَالْإِنْفِرَادْ فَفِيهَا سَلَامَتُكْ Either seclusion and remaining alone, and in that will be your safety. There is safety in that. So that's one option, is seclusion. Officer Shahbaz, my family can help you with that, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah, And actions are by intentions. Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah khairan. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Um, so first of all is just seclude oneself, right? And seclusion is an option. Seclusion is an option, but, but many of us won't be able to endure it. Many of us won't be able to endure it. And there, one may be able to find a balance as well. And that's what we've seen many of the Salihin that we've encountered on. They stick to certain, um, they move between certain activities in certain places and certain company. For instance, there, was, there were tribes that were typically associated with knowledge and khair, knowledge and good deeds. And, you know, if you, the city that, that Allah privileged us to study in, the city of Tadim, much of the market is uh, many people in the market are from this group of people, right? One of the families is called Al Al Khatib, the Khatib family, lovers of Ahl Bayt from from very early generations, and also descendants of Abad bin Bishr al Ansari, radiAllahu anhu. So their time, how was their time spent? Their time was spent between masajid and work, and then the rabat in the evening, and home. Right, so you're you're at your store, you're at the Rabat, or you're at home. That's 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 your loop, right? And they, their lives and times were dedicated to that. Many of them are hafad, 
the, the, the lower of them as someone who's read, you know, Yakut and Nafis, like a kind of advanced intermediate text in Shafi Fiqh, read Umda. Many of them, many of them who I know, you know, who I've known a couple decades now, Minhaj and what have you, but they have a store, they work by day and just, you know, their lives are dedicated to that. And that's like a balanced type of Uzla. Um, Allahu Akbar. And so that's one option, though again, many of us are, are not likely to find that as an option. Um, that's, that's not likely in our context uh, to be something that we can do, but we can cut off those things that are just entirely harmful and superfluous. We could reduce a lot of the media that we're exposed to, for example, and again, every one of these conditions, much of the media we're exposed to violates them. And that's a type of companionship, so we should avoid it. We should avoid that, it's bad company. Even, even just, you know, um, neurologically, just in terms of our, 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 um, the health of our minds, it's, it's having ill effects, much less the spiritual impact that it's having. You know, we should um, unplug and, and, and tune out a lot of that. So that's one, is, is, is seclusion. And he said, in that is safety. وَإِمَّا أَن تَكُونَ مُخَالَتُكَ and he said, and, or that the company you keep with those um, who are your companions be to the extent of the piety of their qualities. Right? To the extent of the salah of their qualities, you keep their company. So we measure people against, for example, these conditions. And to the extent that they fulfill them, we um, benefit from that company. And then he continues and he says, وَذَلِكَ بِأَن تَعْلَمْ أَنْ إِخْوَتَكْ ثَلَاثَةً And that is that you know that your brothers are of three types. There are three types of brothers or sisters, three types of companions. أَخُنْ لِأَخِرَتِكْ A brother or sister that is beneficial to your hereafter. A brother or sister whose company you keep because they're of benefit to your hereafter. He says, فَلَا تُرَائِ فِيهِ إِلَّا الدِّينِ Then um, he translates to Rai and he says, Seek from him only support in religious practices. And I would say, uh, seek from him or, uh, or uh, be cautious in him concerning deen. Right? That um, what you watch for in him is deen. So someone who's adherent to the deen that person is of benefit to your hereafter. And that's the type of company that, that one needs, really. That's the, from the most beneficial of company, right? Someone who helps your deen, someone you cooperate to maintain prayers. Some of us have brothers or sisters that call us, or we call them for tahajjud, for fajr, for maintaining jama'ah. We ride together to those places. We meet and pray together, for example. That's excellent. That's, that's the type of cooperation that we should have. Some of the pious, they marry for that. You know, they t our shiuch tell a story of a married couple. Both of them were older. Maybe they were widowed. You know, not past an age where one would typically want to marry if, if one was, was single still at that age. They married just to have someone to, to uh, cooperate in Qiyam al -Layl. It's a simple environment, an environment may, maybe electricity wasn't as plentiful as it is or even prior to its existence. They married their, their mate to cooperate in Qiyam al -Layl. And that's an, that's an excellent basis for a relationship. That's an excellent basis. وَأَخْوَنْ لِدُنْيَاكَ فَلَا تُرَعِي فِيهِ إِلَّا الْخُلُقُ الْحَسَنِ And a brother or sister that is of worldly benefit. For example, you work with them. You cooperate on projects, you go into uh, into business or what have you, or there's some other benefit that you attain from them, then only be cautious uh, or, or, or concerned in him or with him uh, about it, the, the, the noble character. So look for good character in those that you try to um, cooperate to gain benefit from in your worldly affairs. And good character is controlling um, desire and anger, and he, he's, he described it as that. Right, someone who, someone who, they don't fly off the handle, and they're not over consumed by their appetites. 
that harm will come from that, and we seek refuge in Allah from that. وَأَخْوَنْ لِتَسْتَأْنِسْ بِهِ And a brother or sister who is agreeable company or who you're comforted by, you enjoy their company. You, you keep uh, company with them so you don't feel lonely, so that you have an uns, you have a, a companionship and, um, and, uh, and, and you're comforted by their, their presence. فَلَا تُرَائِفِهِ إِلَّا السَّلَامَ مِنْ خُبْفِهِ وَشَرِّهِ And he said in this, uh, your concern should be that you're safe from any wickedness and evil. So if they're enjoyable company, um, be careful not to keep company for the sake of enjoyment with someone who's wicked or evil. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that. He's saying because you'll be harmed. And then he, and Imam al-Ghazali, he's excellent for this. You know, the way he breaks things down or categorizes them. So what does he say? He says, because there are three types of people. Ahaduhum, methaluhu, methalul ghida, la yustagna anhu. The first is like nourishment. One cannot do without it. You cannot do without him or her. They're a companion that is absolutely necessary. And that's like the companion that benefits your deen. That's like someone from whom you gain sound knowledge or are encouraged to perform pious deeds. Uh, you can't do without those. Ilm wal amal, you cannot do without them. Knowledge and practice, you cannot do without it. Wal akhar, methaluhu methalu dawa, yuhtaj ilayhi fi waqtin duna waqt. And the second is like medicine. You need it sometimes, or it's needed sometimes, and not others. So that's like the latter two. There's some that we must uh, engage, people we must engage for our worldly interests. And there are some that we must engage just because most people can't, most people are not going to be able to be alone all the time. Uzla, that's, you know, for someone to be able to be alone, typically that's someone that's very well grounded. So you're going to need to have company, and, but, but again, perhaps from time to time, you know, you just have some, uh, some downtime, some uh, social time. And you need that sometimes. As for the deen, um, that's absolutely necessary, rather more important than one's bodily nourishment, one's um, spiritual nourishment. And, and it's a big musibah that people haven't recognized that. Many, many people in, in the world today haven't recognized that maintaining our hearts is more important than maintaining our bodies. If the heart dies, our hereafter dies. And if the body dies, we leave a, a wretched dunya earlier than maybe we would have preferred. Right? And it's going to happen anyway. But if we leave with a good heart, we'll be fine in the hereafter, and that's eternal. But if we ruin our heart and our akhirah, khalas, that's, that's everything. You've ruined the whole affair, and we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that. So the most important thing that one preserves is what? Deen. Is deen. And, uh, and Allah grant us that in lutf and afia. Tayyib, so those are the first two. One what we can't do without, and that's how, that's the likes of a shafi'i. That is the likes of a Shafi'i. Ahmed bin Hanbal said of a Shafi'i, he's like the sun is to the world and like Afia is to the body. He prayed um, after every prayer for him. He said he's, he's like well-being to the body and the sun to the world. That's like uh, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Umar said of Sayyidina Ali, I seek refuge in Allah from being in a land where Abu Hassan is absent, not being present with Abu Hassan. Because of the, the, the shura and the fatawa that he would give to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. Allahu Akbar. And may Allah grant us to be that. And we should strive to be that. Be people that are of benefit. They say of the pious, Wasfahum fadlun bidun fudul or bila fudul, right? They're entirely virtuous and nothing is superfluous. Allahu Akbar. And Allah grant us... Uh, Keep the company of the Sadiqeen like that. So, so those are the first two. Said so the third person, their likeness, uh, or the third person is like an illness. It is never needed at all. 
we seek refuge in Allah from being like that. The third companion is, is like an illness. And he said, that's the person, you, uh, again, that you uh, we should avoid. And we seek refuge in Allah from that. He says, so how do you deal with that circumstance? How do we deal with those that are like an illness? It is never needed at all, yet the servant may be afflicted by it. So there's types of company that we're afflicted with. And hopefully it's not too close. Such people provide neither benefit nor agreeable company. Right? You can't keep company from them. There's not a benefit. You can't do a transaction with them that's a benefit to your worldly life. They're just not of benefit, but one's afflicted by their company. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that. He said one must simply be diplomatic with them until one is relieved from them. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from them. And when someone dies, uh, and this is an athar, that the category, they're in one or two categories. Mustarih or mustarah minhu. Even the person through death, they've attained rest. They found peace by dying, or they've given other peace, through, they've given peace to others through their departure, and we seek refuge in Allah from being in that latter category. However, there's a benefit in them. And what is that benefit? The Imam says, Nevertheless, observing such a person may bring great benefit if Allah gives you the ability to see it. You see in his vices and low states what you find repugnant, and so you would avoid these states. Indeed, the felicitous one is he who takes a warning from others. And the believer is the mirror of his fellow believer. So he's saying that if there are those who were afflicted by their company, the benefit that we can attain is taking a warning not to be like that. And, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from, um, from being such a person that, that is just merely harmful to others. And we seek refuge in Allah from that. He says, um, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. It was said to Isa, Alayhi wa ala nabina as salatu wa salam. Who refined your character? Who taught you good character? He answered, No one refined my character. I rather saw, or you could say, but rather I saw the poor behavior of the ignorant and I avoided it. Right? So he would look at misbehavior of those who are ignorant and avoid that misbehavior. And he would take that as an admonition. And that's one of the ways to learn what good character is. One of the ways to learn what good character is, is by observing poor character and avoiding it. Or rather, one of the ways to, uh, to know what is faulty and then refine oneself. Is the things that you deem to be faulty in others, recognize that they're a fault in you as well, if you, if you, uh, if you possess them and thus uh, refrain from them. And we seek, again, Allah protect us from poor character, though, and give us to be refined. And then he concludes, Allah Yerhamu, he says, um, Indeed he, may Allah sends blessings and peace upon him and our Prophet spoke the truth. Right? Sadaqa Isa ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. For if people were to avoid in themselves what they find reprehensible in others, their characters would be, would be refined without any need of a guide. Right? They would need someone to teach them adab. They would take that deep. They would be disciplined by um, watching the misconduct of others and avoiding it. And that's one of the ways. He mentions um, in, in some of his works the ways to, some, some of the ways to know uh, about oneself and its faults. And one of them is to have a sheikh, a sheikh murabbi who's a guide. And another is to, um, to ask a friend to be honest with you and candid and point out the things that you need to work on. Another is to look at uh, the faults in others and avoid those. And another is to listen to what your enemies say about you. And that's obviously perhaps the most difficult, but that's a way to take admonition. And, uh, and that's the benefit of that as well. And typically where there's smoke, there's fire. Our enemies typically will point out our faults. They'll tend to exaggerate. Um, they'll relish in them. 
Uh, they might unearth old faults that you've already repented from, but uh, one can take admonition from some of the things they say, and, and Allah knows best. And may Allah give us to be good company. And again, if we look at this, these conditions he gave, much of the media, if we just left that alone, our company would improve immensely. And, and that's a big chunk of many of our time, uh, the time of many of us, so we should be very careful with it. And some of it's entirely in, in, in the category of neither of this worldly or of otherworldly benefit, but rather of harm, entirely in the category of dishonesty and corruption. So it should be avoided. And let us seek good company and really try to be good company. Try to be good company, especially in, in, in our sacred spaces, our, our sacred spaces and times that we come together in. Let's try to be good company and try to uh, uh, embody these virtues, inshallah ta'ala, so we're good company for one another and we help one another, inshallah ta'ala. Yes, sir. Raise your voice a little because the heater's on by me. Um, so uh, that's a good question. So the, 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 the brother asked the question that maybe that, that there may be something of, um, of a struggle or tension when those that are, uh, that are working, uh, that are trying to improve and may have some of these bad attributes and they want to seek out the company of those who have, are more virtuous and are closer to what the Imam is encouraging and um, and should the, the latter category avoid that because it might be of harm to them that's one and then the second was if you're going to keep people's company and you're worried about your uh, your faults harming them so first of all what's meant here is he said um, in the brothers that you keep company with that are support for you and he's referring to peers while this individual who asked him the question and he answered in this text while you're studying um and so that's you're talking about a friend and he says uh, he says astiqa wa ashab right a friend and a companion and also no we're just getting ready to pray also thank you um la ilaha illallah so when you seek someone as a teacher or a role model in, in Amal Saleh, that is not the companionship that's being referred to here. That's considered ta'lim. That's teaching. And then what in what's what the, the, the conditions that apply there are the conditions of someone who's learning and someone who's teaching. So um, in the case of someone who is in a position of of imparting of transmitting what has been taken from those from whom they have taken, that's not the same as, as their peers. That relationship is different, its conditions are different, and it's extremely beneficial for the teacher. It's extremely beneficial. And they will not be harmed by keeping the company as a teacher and as a mentor of someone who lacks some of what they've gained. It is a, it's a means of amplifying what they've gained and them being um, them being uh, uh, increased in the, in their own growth, and um, one of the differences that Sayyidina Ali mentioned between wealth and knowledge is that knowledge increases when you spend it. I mean, when you share it, right? That 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 knowledge increases through sharing it, and um, and they have a responsibility, so so they they won't be harmed. They won't be harmed. Um, and then, uh, and then, if we are teachers or mentors, we might harm our students by our shortcomings. So we should be very cautious of that, and we should also always try to push them further and introduce them to those from whom we benefited, so they can benefit more. And we should pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala 
when we're going to keep people's company, that Allah not um, turn us over to them and Allah not turn them over to us, but rather that Allah be the steward of each party and give um, them to benefit from one another. And Allah knows best. <laughs> La ilaha illallah. And there's a book there in what is the beginning of uh, a, like a fledgling effort to have a bookstore. Right now it's just some books on consignment called Three Treatises, Mutual Reminding, Good Manners, and the Aphorisms. In the second of those three good manners, the imam mentions the responsibility of an aspirant seeking the best company he or she can find and some of the conditions of that relationship. And I would say that everyone should, um, should seek that out. And that's really the, the, the ultimate company that one can keep. And um, may Allah grant us that and make us to be with the sadiqeen. Yes, sir. How can I find the balance while I'm examining the person in front of me character and not having this image of myself being like better than him or, you know, if, if I'm examining the person in front of me character and I have to look into people character to, to keep good company for myself, while at the same time I might be lost within this, like I'm better than him or like if I'm, I'm rejecting someone's company, mm -hmm. how, how can I protect myself from falling into this? That's an excellent question. La ilaha illallah. So a brother asked the question, if we're, um, what, how do we maintain the balance between avoiding misconduct and, and not feeling superior to those individuals who, from whom we witness misconduct? Or in, in the case that he mentioned, uh, more specifically, uh, uh, character. La ilaha illallah. And the author actually deals with it as an independent topic when he deals with diseases of the heart and avoiding the masi of the heart. He talks about al-kibr, and he mentions examples. If you see someone who's younger than you, say that they're better than me because they've not disobeyed Allah, and I have. Child, right? If you see someone who's old, they're superior to me because they've lived longer and obeyed Allah longer. You see someone who's ignorant, they, um, the case against them is less than the case against me. And then also the affair of the, 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 the seal of one's life is ghayb. The, the, the end of one's affair is unknown. So many a person is in a bad circumstance, appears to be in a bad circumstance now, and they'll die on a good ending and be in a very good state. And each of us um, could die with a bad ending and be in a very bad state. So we can never conclude that we're superior to anyone, even if the behavior that they're demonstrating right now is obviously is obviously problematic we don't know what the seal of their deeds will be and then also um and then also la ilaha illallah uh recognizing that we're not we're not allowed to judge right we're not allowed to conclude that we're superior but we are ordered to to adhere to certain standards and avoid certain types of conduct so in that state, we're just a slave. And um, as slaves, we're also ordered not to view, conclude that we're superior to another one of Allah's slaves. So we obey him in that as well. And with that, you can do amr bil ma'roof wa nahyan al-munkar, suhba uzla, whatever, you do that as an abd. And the, the Lord ordered us uh, not to be mutakabirin. He said al kibriyau Ridai wal adamatu izari. He said, Kibriya is my upper garment and greatness is my lower garment, and ordered us not to make munaza in either of them. So slaves, we avoid that because that's that is the uh, that is the sanctuary of the king, and we cannot trespass. However, the king has ordered us to avoid certain things and to command certain things and forbid certain things, so we do those as slaves, and that's humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obedience. And you know that's in one valley, and arrogance towards others is, is in another. And Allah knows best. Yeah. So through learning, through learning, uh, it becomes uh, possible, and Allah grant us that in Lutf and Afi. And obviously, uh, one has to keep working at it. But there's a section specifically. Uh, so learning about how to avoid kibir, um, that's that's how one will strike that balance. La ilaha illa anta. Yes, sir. The word he uses is fasik. 
yeah. who persists in a kabira in a, a major sin. He's saying you witness it. We're openly commits kabair, right? Yeah, openly kabair. He, the person's doing it openly, persistently, and it's a kabira. That's what he's saying. A kabira as opposed to a sagira, right? A major sin as opposed to a minor sin. And in, when we took that lesson, we referred you to a, a list of major sins in the appendices of reliance as a traveler from Ibn Hajr al Haytami, for example. Wallahu alam, and we should. We should pray, alhamdulillah, and forgive the delayed start, especially those who waited for some period of time or those who were online and might have missed and came in late. We were working with a group of brothers and sisters today, alhamdulillah, and juggling many responsibilities, but we did want to maintain the lesson. So alhamdulillah, we were able to, and they got a lot done, alhamdulillah, and they prayed a funeral prayer in absentia over those who were killed, and we pray that they grant, are granted the station of martyrdom in New Zealand, alhamdulillah, and a brother Derek took his shahada. I see a couple of the brothers who were with him in the halakha the other night were present. I don't know if they're still present, but alhamdulillah, there was a lot of good. And we ask Allah to accept all of that from all of you and us, and that the reward of all of that goes to those um, for whom the, the, the reward was donated by those who did waqf here, and the foremost of them being the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is Allahu anna, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa ma hu ahla. We'll close with this dua, inshallah, then have the Adhan and Asr. Alhamdulillah, wa shukr. Ya Allah, Ya Rabb. ربنا انفعنا بما علمتنا ربي علمنا الذي ينفعنا ربي فقهنا وفقه أهلنا وقربات لنا في ديننا مع أهل القدر أنثى وذكر ربي وفقنا ووفقهم لما ترتدي قولا وفعلا كرما وارزق الكل حلالا دائما وأخلا أتقيا علما نحظى بالخير ونكفى كل شر ربنا واصلح لنا كل الشؤون وأكر بالرضا من قل أيون وقض عنا ربنا كل الديون قبل أن تأتينا رسل المنون واغفر استور أنت أكرم ستار وصلاة الله تغشى المصطفى من إلا الحقي دعانا والوفا بكتاب فيه للناس شفاء وعلى الآل الكرام الشرفاء وعلى الصحبه المصابه الغرار اللهم اهدنا بهداك وجلنا ممن يسارع في رضاك ولا تولنا وليا سواك ولا تجلنا ممن خالفك أمرك وأصاك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين في كل دهرة نبدا نبدا خوك ورضا نسي وزنة عرشي ومدار كلماته يا ربنا اعترفنا بأننا نقترفنا وأننا أصرفنا على لضاء أشرفنا فتب علينا توبة تغسل كل حوبة واستر لنا العورات وآمن الروات واغفر لوالدينا ربي ومولدينا والأهل والإخوان وسائر الخلان وكل ذي محبة أو جيرة أو صحبة والمسلمين أجمع أمين رب اسمع فضلا وجودا منا لا باكتساب منا بالمصطفى الرسول نحظى بكل سولي بالمصطفى الرسول نحظى بكل سولي بالمصطفى الرسول نحظى بكل سولي صلاة وسلم ربي عليه عد الحب وآله والصحب عدادة الصحب والحمد للإله في البدء والتناه سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون سلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى الفاتحة. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم.